Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with Developer University. For more of my training videos for beginners, please visit me at devu.com. In this lesson, we're going to focus on iteration statements, a specific iteration statement called the for iteration statement. Sometimes you're going to need to loop or iterate through a sequence of things to find something that you're looking for, to find a successful match. And actually, you're going to do this sort of data manipulation more than you realize. So uh, you'll have to trust me that this is a very important tool in your toolbox that you're building. So as you can see, I've already taken the liberty of creating our project. I called it for iteration. Pause the video, go through the steps that you already know how to perform to create a new project, new console window project, and catch up with me. Uh, I'm going to begin to uh, add some code here on line 13 in just a moment. Now the syntax that we're going to write here in just a moment is possibly the most cryptic of anything that you've seen yet. And I'm going to be completely honest, sometimes I get things a little bit mixed up myself, but don't worry, after we've struggled through it once or twice, uh, I'm going to share the little secret that I use to get it perfect the first time, every time, all right? So having warned you about the complexity of the syntax, I'm still betting that you could figure it out and read it even before we actually attempt to run the application, even before I take the time to explain what each little bit of the application is doing. So let me write it out here and then we'll, we'll try that. Okay, very simple, uh, at least very compact uh, section of code here. Uh, actually, you need one more line of code, right? Console.readline. There we go. Now we're ready. Ready for action. Okay. So what do you think that this code does? Okay, got a theory in mind? Well, let's go ahead and run the application and see if your theory is true. All right, you can see that we have a list of numbers from zero to nine, and then we can hit enter to continue on. So we're using C Sharp to execute this little block of code right here until a certain condition is true, at which point we will stop executing that line of code and continue on to line number 17. So this for statement says that we should begin by declaring a variable, we're going to call it i, we could call it anything we want to, and we're going to initialize its value to zero. Now, as long as i is less than 10, we're going to continue to execute the code below it in our code block defined by our curly braces. Each time that we iterate through, we'll increment the value of i by one. So this little bit right here is probably the part that you probably wouldn't uh, completely understand unless I explain it to you. Remember how we use the plus equal sign in order to automatically um, take the value of message and add something to the end of it and then assign it back to the value of message? Remember that uh, a couple lessons ago? We're essentially doing that here. This is the, uh, the increment operator. So we're going to increment the value of i by one. All right, so again, we're gonna initialize and uh, declare a variable and initialize the value. Then as long as this middle part is true, we'll execute the code below. And once we finish executing, then we will increment the value of i and then do that evaluation one more time. If it's still true, then we'll execute this code again We'll increment i. If this is still true, we'll increment it again, and so on. All right, so that's how it works. Yes, this is cryptic syntax, but if you can just separate the three parts in your mind by remembering that there's semicolons that separate them, that can help. You know you're going to need to start off with some counter of some sort. You're going to need a condition, and then you're going to need an incrementer at the end. Okay. 
And again, I'll show you a way to remember this so you never forget it. But before we do that, let me comment out this line of code and give you a variation on this idea. This will be fun. So here we go. So you can see that I simply added inside of our of our code block for the for iteration statement another if statement with its own code block inside of it. And here we're checking the current value of i. And once we find something we're looking for where i is equal to 7, then what? We'll perform this code. What does this code do? Well, this part's obvious, but this break statement may not be so obvious. You use the break to bust out of or break out of the four iterations. So we're going to make it to the value where i is 7, and then we're going to hit the break statement, and then we'll continue on to line number 23. Let's see it in action. It's not going to look all that exciting, but I got an idea. All right, it found 7, and it, it pretty much finished, right? I have an idea. Why don't we watch this execute line by line? And to do that, we'll use the debugging tools inside of Visual Studio, which we have not even talked about up to this point, and yet is probably one of the most important features of using Visual Studio, as opposed to just using a text editor and a command line compiler. Uh, so uh, to make this work, what I'm going to do is actually set a breakpoint here on this line of code. Now, how did I do that? I just went to this leftmost column, and I clicked in the column, in that gray column, and it created a little red dot, and off to the right-hand side, you see that that whole line of code is outlined in red. Now, there are, truth be told, a number of different ways to set a breakpoint. Um, probably the easiest way to do it uh, is, is what I just showed you, but there's also keyboard shortcuts and there's menu options as well. So for example, with my, with my blinking cursor on line number 16, I'll go to the debug window and I'll select toggle breakpoint. If we look over to the right hand side, you can also see that the F9 key will accomplish the same thing. Great. All right, so now let's go ahead and run the application and see what happens. All right, so immediately, the application pops up, but before anything can be printed out to the console window, uh, notice that we have paused the execution of our code. And we're paused right here on this breakpoint. Now, at this point, what I can do is, uh, I, can just, I can do a lot of cool things. First of all, I can see what my local variables values are currently. I can also change the value of those variables. I can monitor those values. I can change which line of code will get executed next and a bunch of other things. Now, this is not a series on debugging. I could easily spend an hour showing you a lot of cool little features. Uh, however, what I do want to do is call your attention to this little window at the bottom. Currently right now, we're in what's called debug time. And with the application execution pause on this line of code, the next line of code that's going to execute is that, that line right there that's highlighted in yellow. I can look at these little windows, like this locals window, for example. And you can see that the locals window will contain any variables that are currently in scope at the moment. So obviously, args is... Uh, something that we haven't talked about yet. Let's ignore that one. But what I want to focus on is the value of i. Currently, its value is 0. How do I know that? Because I'm looking here in the value column. I can also see what the data type of i is. It's an integer. All right. If I were to hover my mouse cursor over i, you can see I'd be able to see it there as well. And if I were to go and pin down that value, I'd be able to monitor it uh, as well in this little helper window. In fact, I can kind of drag it around here. Now watch what happens. Let me readjust some things here. I'm going to step through this line of code. Now there's a couple of different ways I can step through the code. I'm going to recommend that we only talk about step over for right now. Uh, when we learn about methods, we can step into and step out of, but for right now, this middle button right here, the step over or the F10 key on your keyboard is what we want. So I'm going to click it once and notice that we jumped from line number 16 to line number 22. Why was that? Well, the reason was because 
i was not equal to seven so we didn't execute the code inside of the code blocks underneath the if statement and we jumped to the end of the four code block now let's continue just to step through this you're going to see that we'll increment i by one now when we do that notice what happened the value of i changed from zero to one and that change is indicated by a change in color Whenever you see the color red, that means something changed in the previous line execution. The value of that variable changed from some other value now to the value of one. We can also see this in this little mini window right here as well, uh, how it is now turned to the color red. Now that we've incremented, we're gonna do the, the next check to see is i still less than 10? And here we're gonna step one more time into our program. Here we're gonna step and in the line 14, which opens up our code block, and we'll do another um, another assessment. Is i currently the value of one equal to seven? No. So we'll jump out of that if block and continue on. And we can just continue through this exercise until we reach where i is equal to seven. Now, truth be told, I don't have to keep hitting the step over button. I can just use this continue button and this will just keep bringing me right back to the breakpoint. This basically says continue running until you hit another breakpoint. And so here at this point now, I see that my i is equal to seven and that's what I'm checking for. So things should get interesting right now. I'm gonna go back to start stepping line by line through my code and here's where I hit the uh, the console.write line, and if I look now on screen, it actually did write that to uh, the console window. And now I'm gonna step through the next line of code and notice that it jumped out from the break statement outside to line number 23, outside of the for statement to the console.read line. We can hit continue from that point on. Our application is still running until we hit the enter key on the keyboard and then we've exited out. All right, very cool. Now you may have found it laborious to step through a number of times or even hit the continue button a number of times until we found just the right condition. So what we can do is make this breakpoint into a conditional breakpoint. So to do that, I'm gonna hover over the little red stop sign, I guess you could call it, in the leftmost column and I'm gonna click this settings. And here, this will open up a little breakpoint settings window right in line in my code. It pushed all the other code down. Notice that it goes from line 16 here to line 17 way below it. And I'm gonna add a condition. And whenever this expression, a conditional expression is true, then we'll break at that point. So in our case, when uh, i is in fact equal to seven, then we'll will break on that breakpoint, okay? You can see that when I hit enter on my keyboard, it's saved, and now I can close this. You can see that the little icon changed from just a red stop sign to having a white plus symbol inside of it. So now when we run the application, uh, notice that I is seven and that I is seven, our little window here, before we even stopped into our breakpoint. And now we can continue stepping line by line through our code and continue on, right? And we got our result and we can continue on. Okay, great. So again, I could spend an entire hour just showing you other cool little features that will help you debug your applications, but understanding how to set a breakpoint, how to run your application to a breakpoint, how to step through line by line, and then how to resume, at least resume temporarily or continue by using the continue button. Those are the key concepts in debugging, all right, in the, using the Visual Studio Debugger. Now, let's go ahead and it'll turn off this breakpoint. From now on, what I wanna do is just eliminate it. I can do that in one of two ways. To completely turn it off, I can just click on it, it'll go away. Or I can temporarily disable it by using this little uh, icon that was next to the gear that we clicked earlier. And now you can see there's a little uh, outline in the leftmost column and an outline around the line of code that had the breakpoint, but no longer are we actually going to break on that line. Okay, great. So let's do this. Underneath the for statement from before, but 
uh, above the the console dot read line, I want to I want to do what I promised you at the very outset, which was show you a way, a foolproof way that you can get the syntax right for a four iteration statement and truth be told for just about anything else by using a little secret code snippets. Okay, it's not that much of a secret, but you probably didn't know about it, did you? Okay, all right, so to do this, it's really easy. If you can remember, I need a four iteration statement, just type in the word four. You'll see that it pops up in the IntelliSense. And if you look after the IntelliSense pops up a little message to the right there, code snippet for for loop, note, tab twice to insert the for snippet. All right, let's do it. Tab, tab. Bam, and there we go. And notice that uh, it, go, it went ahead and pretty much set it all up, although there are some parts that we're going to have to change, like, for example, the length. But I could also change, uh, I don't have to use the value i for my iteration statement as my placeholder, as my counter, whatever you want to call it. I could call something like my value. And notice as I'm typing, and then I hit the tab key on my keyboard, it changed everywhere that was using the I variable label to my value. All right, very cool. Hitting tab also took us to the next spot in our code that we're going to need to replace, which was the length, or in other words, how many times should this for loop iterate? And I'm gonna say we'll do it until my value is less than 12. Now, here again, we can use a number of different um, equality or inequality operators here. We don't have to use the, uh, the less than. We could use the, the, the equal or we could use um, the greater than, whatever makes sense for our application. But I'm going to keep it simple and leave leave it just like that. Once I'm done making changes, I can just hit the enter on my keyboard. There were some highlighted areas in that were highlighted in gold color kind of that indicate that these are replacement areas. They go away and now my mouse cursor is right between the opening and closing curly braces. And at this point then I can continue to, you know, create my application right line and then my value like so. And then we can run our application and we would get the following result. All right. Okay, so just to recap, it was a short lesson, but we learned a lot. Not only did we talk about four iteration statements and why you might want them, and we'll see them at use later, but we also talked about the debugging tools, uh, just briefly, and how to step through our code, how to monitor the value of variables, how to use the break statement to bust out, to break out of a iteration statement. We looked at code snippets and how to replace values in a code snippet uh, in order to make it our own. All right, so we'll use some of these techniques that we learned here throughout the rest of the series. Very important video. Uh, and so let's continue on the next lesson. We'll see you there. Thanks.